This is Sean with Gate City. We're out here today and what we're working on is we're going to replace the concrete around this drainage basin so it's all cracked up and they're worried about it caving in and just being unstable so got Ronald with me today we've got a bunch of concrete stuff and so we're going to cut that old concrete out of there and put some new in so that's what we're working on today This company definitely wants to take care of this drainage basin that's collapsing in and breaking up, but at the same time, they don't really want to spend a ton of money on it. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to come up with a, a fairly budget-friendly repair that's actually going to look good. And it's also got to look good and it's got to last really well too. And so you just heard me say that this looks like it was four inch right here. And so it may not have been compacted quite right or with all the huge trucks and forklifts that run through here. It may have just gotten compacted over time and cracked up and everything. And so what we're doing here is we're just trying to lay it out and try to use as, as, as much concrete as needed, but not any extra, and also make it look really good. So Ronald had some pretty good ideas about where, how to lay this out, and we brought a, a straight edge board with us to run the saw along, and we're going to put some weights on the ends of the boards to hold it on, a couple bu buckets of gravel and the wheelbarrow full of gravel. And so... Spending a little bit of time here, getting it, getting it right, getting it even, getting everything to look good is going to help a lot in how it looks at the end. We've got our straight edge set up, we measured everything, and Ronald's got a little short piece of hose right there and the drill pump. And then if you look up in the trailer, I've got, I think that's a 20 gallon carboy right there. And that came out of one of the research labs at UNC Greensboro. And we use that to carry water with us if we need remote water. And so getting this thing going was, getting it all set up was really important to getting a good cut. And so I'm just gonna take a little bit of time here and get this cut going. You want the eye protection? Yeah. 
how is this working? Huh? This was working pretty good, huh? It's working pretty good. You need to go down here. We're going to fix up on the Oh, okay. It should be ready to start. Okay. Ronald's going ahead and getting this cut going and I don't know if you all caught that but I asked him if he needed the eye protection and he said no and this is common that I found with construction workers there they've been trained to get the job done no matter what the risk is to yourself and so they often don't want to use PPE and so the best way I've found to get these workers to wear their protection is what I just did right there to say oh it's for the video to keep the viewers happy so just like you saw, Ronald said, okay, if it's for the video, I'll put on the eye protection. But that's really, really important to protect yourself while you're working out here. And at the end of the day, this job is not worth getting hurt or getting, getting injured. So what do you all think of that, that way of getting your workers to put on their PPE? It's for the video. The carboy ran out of water, so we tried filling it back up and then we just decided to use the, the watering plant thingy there for the water. And luckily I had a second chop saw on the truck because the first one, I, I had replaced the pull cord on it, but I used a cheap eBay part and I guess it worked through a couple of jobs and then it just it stopped catching or whatever. So luckily I had a second cutoff saw or demo saw, whatever you want to call those quickie saw on the truck and we were able to keep this going and so here we're just getting our last cuts done and getting everything completed ready to start tearing the concrete out cool Annie. yeah this is called a water scorpion and he's got those raptoral front legs there for grabbing things and he's got a set of snorkels on the back right there and so he'll lay in wait with the snorkels up breathing and then he'll grab stuff with those raptorial front limbs this is a small one you can see it's got just wing buds right there so it's a it's a nymph but yeah that just popped out whoops he went right back in there but it just popped out of the the watering jug while i was watering yeah, he came out of the lake he came out of the pond yeah pond. so we just caught him oh wow That's yep. sweet. anyway i'll put him back 
Taking a closer look at that water scorpion, this is my copy of Merritt and Cummins. And if we look over here at Nepody, it says anterior lobe of pronotum not wider than head or anterior lobe of pronotum wider. I think this one is the slenderer one. So this is Nanatra. And they show a picture of it over here. That's not a very good picture, so let's see if I've got a different book that we can use. This is Slater and Baranowski, 1978. This book is impossible to find, and I worked for years off of a photocopy until I found it. So this is probably one of my most, my most valuable books in my collection. But anyway, here we are at the Nepids, and that's a pretty good drawing there of that guy. And I think this is the one that we have here. The other ones are much larger in North Carolina, but I also have another book that we could take a look at. And this, this is a copy, but this is Aquatic and Semi-Aquatic Heteroptera of Florida. This is Epler. And if we look over here, we have the genus that I think it is, and that is definitely him. Those things are very, very common here in North Carolina. And one of the things I always think of when I think of water scorpions is this is an example of an invertebrate preying upon a vertebrate. And so Epler even talks about that here. He says they will prey on anything they can catch. He's observed them catch and feed on tadpoles, baby fish, and other arthropods. So there's an example of an invertebrate that preys on vertebrates. Now that we've got our cuts done, it's time to get in here with the jackhammer and the pry bar and maybe the pickaxe and get this old concrete torn out of here. And so I, there was not really enough concrete to bring a whole dump truck. And so we're just going to load it up in the two wheelbarrows and I've got a couple buckets here as well. And then just throw those in the trailer there. The other thing we need to do once we get the concrete out of here is I want to dig it down a little bit because I want to put in at least six or maybe even eight. I can't remember how many I put in, but... I put in quite a bit of concrete here to try to keep this from happening again. And so this is now just a process of getting all this out of here to make the space for the new concrete to go in. So that's what we're working on now is getting this all torn out of here. All right, I just talked to Brian at the plant. He's about to send some concrete. I'll help you with that in a sec. And looks like somebody bit off some big chunks over here. So the big chunks are nice, but you gotta move them. So yeah, we got this all torn out. We're gonna dig it down a little bit deeper. It's already about seven inches thick right there. And then we'll get some wire thrown in there and the concrete's on the way. Once we get the rest of this concrete torn out of here, we dig it down just a little bit more. It was already about seven or so inches once you got closer to the grate. And so we wanted it to be a uniform seven or eight inches the whole way. So we're gonna dig it down a little bit. And then I did bring in a little bit of gravel in one of those wheelbarrows. And so we're gonna put some gravel back in there and I brought the jumping jack tamper and we're gonna just compact the heck out of it. And so what you're gonna see here is the I guess the boot or the seal on the tamper was, was blown out and so the thing just covered me in oil as I was using it. But we got everything compacted, we compacted it in lifts a little bit and so I feel pretty good about this. We're also going to stick in some, some wire so Ronald had some wire mesh at his place and he brought it today for us to use. So the name, name of the game is to get this 
this repair done so it will actually last. Just trying to get these corners cleaned up. Whoa, Ooh. yeah, I got her. That's it right there. Just pull yeah, those two that's pieces out. That's it. All right, three more to go. This one's good here. There you go, look at that. Fit right in there, isn't it? Yep. Concrete just arrived and we're about to get started here. Go ahead. We got a rear dumper. Yeah. That jumping jack was spraying me with oil. That was, wasn't it? Yeah, look at that. Wow. Where's it coming from? Harvey. Oh, that's where it's coming from. Hey, should we spray this down with some water? There you go, boss. That's okay. Maybe a little bit. Well, I think we can work with it. They're mixing a gallon or two in there. It's a little bit dry with all that fiber in it. We are getting this pour going here and I think the plant has like a one or one and a half or something like that yard minimum and so I pretty much got the minimum. There wasn't a whole lot here and so it wasn't too bad to get this pour going. The reason they've got two drivers here is one of these guys was in training and so these rear dumpers are a little bit easier to drive around. So he was driving and you got Sam there who's running the shoot for us. Concrete truck's all washed up and they are about to head out of here. We got a new driver today, Nate. So he's in training. Okay, the concrete's on the ground and we're letting it set up for a little bit. Brian put a double batch of fiber in here to try to strengthen it up a little bit. And so it's already 
tightening up pretty quickly it seems like but this is double fiber 4500 psi with air so that's what we got Kicking now. Okay, I think we are finished. So I'm going to leave these cones up for a week and let that concrete really set up well before they start running all their forklifts and everything across it so yeah there it is little patch job it has been a couple of weeks and ronald zipped back by over there to get the cones and he snapped a few pictures for us so everything turned out really well here they've been driving over it for about a week now and no cracks formed in it so that was good i think putting that wire mesh in there, doing fiber, and doing the 4,500 pound concrete mix was, was the ticket here. And so everything's good here. They weren't too worried about us cleaning up that little bit of residue from the, the cutting process. So we said, that's fine with us. Well, we can leave it just like that. And this, I know this one looks really good. What do you all think about it? I hope you all have enjoyed watching this small concrete patch job, and if you did, make sure you give it a like so YouTube knows it's worth watching. You can also comment and like and subscribe, which supports the channel, doesn't cost you anything. So I will see you all on the next one. Take care.